Hello everyone. Today we have a very special guest with us. She is IPS Ankita Surana. Welcome Ankita to our show and I am in short, you know, a uh, very very um, happy but yes, I am in short of words to express my gratitude for accepting our invitation and being here today with us. So you not only are an inspiration but also you are like a guiding force to the younger generation. All the kudos to your work and all the kudos to your dedication, your hard work that you have done to reach this level. And I'm so proud that we have someone from our community here in posted here in Vizag as the ASP uh, in Andhra Pradesh and at a very young age. So that's again to add to the element. Thank you. So Once much. again, welcome to our show. And uh, to start off with uh, the interview, I would like to ask you about a little bit about your journey and your background as to um, what made you get into the civils. And now that you are an IPS, you are into this um, IPS, what is it that has actually brought you till here? Okay. Firstly, thank you for inviting me here. It's an honor. Uh, regarding my journey, uh, I had done my graduation BSc Biochemistry. So uh, after my graduation, I had taken a break of three, four years. Okay. And after that, I had decided that I would start preparing for UPSC. Okay. So when I began thinking about UPSC, uh, it was not something I had since my childhood dream or something like that. But then I had some of my friends uh, who were writing this exam. Okay. And then uh, I wanted to do something where uh, I could actually serve people or do something for the society, not only for myself, but also for the society. So then I thought this uh, was a very good option, uh, getting into civil services. So it was in 2016 uh, okay. that I decided I would write this exam. Okay. And uh, then, uh, unfortunately, it took me a long four years, four okay. to five years of preparation. Okay. And it was in 2020 that I got selected. Okay. And in 2021, I got inducted into Indian Police Service. Wow. Okay. 2021. Yes. And uh, it's been a few months that you have been posted in Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Okay. Great. So, uh, can you share a little bit more on your four years of preparation? That is your journey into the civils and what uh, were the challenges that you faced while preparing for civils? Yes. Uh, so, as I said, since 2016, it took long four to five years. Uh, so, firstly, I would say the major challenge was I had taken a break from studies after graduation. It was uh, along, around three years that it took me to decide. And uh, so, there was a gap. So, we see that uh, people usually, students after their graduation, immediately they start studying. Correct. So, I had this gap and I had to take up studies again. So, okay. that was one challenge. Okay. Uh, secondly, as I said, it was four years. So, I had to have a lot of patience. Right. To have faith in myself <laughs> that... Right. Uh, despite failures next year, maybe I would clear this. So uh, perseverance, I would say, was a major challenge uh, yes. for studying for four to five long years. And uh, thirdly, I would say guidance, which is very important in this exam. Uh, somewhere the right guidance was missing. That is where I kept faltering every year. Okay. So I would say this were the three major challenges I had to go through in all these long years. Got it. Now, as you speak about challenges, there yes. is one more uh, challenge that just struck my mind because right. uh, you come from a community which is, you know, still uh, yes. a little uh, narrow-minded, I would say, and which still has its own challenges. Yes. So, uh, what made you, I mean, how was your parents' support and yes. coming from such a background, coming from a community which still doesn't make women, you know, allow women to get into especially professions like these. Yes. So, uh, could you explain a little bit more on how your parents reacted to this and how was their support and how you are now standing out? Right. Uh, so, speaking about my parents, I would say they were my pillar strength, in fact. Uh, this was the largest support I had, biggest support. Uh, so when I said four years long, uh, it was actually their trust in me, their belief that uh, somehow you would clear this, you don't stop, you keep going. Uh, and talking about society, yes, I think not only one community, it is in general that uh, when you fail, so society keeps asking you questions that why not some other path? Yes. Why are you still trying? Will yes. you even succeed? Right. So you have to face all this question yourself. Right. So this is the biggest challenge I think not only we but all the aspirants of UPSC civil services they face in their right. life. 
Uh, so this was a major challenge, but then as I said, it was my family. Uh, they took all this criticism from the society. They absorbed it, in fact, and they put me behind the shield that you study. We'll take care of all this, wow. and you will definitely succeed. I think it was their trust that I'm here today. And I think if not for their support, uh, it would have really been a difficult journey yeah, because definitely. until those pillars of strength are actually yes. standing behind us, pushing yes. us. Uh, I don't think, you know, things would actually be exactly. possible. So I'm so glad that your parents supported you. Your family was your pillar of strength. Yes. And uh, at this juncture, uh, you know, as a woman, uh, mm -hmm. after becoming an IPS officer, are there any challenges that you faced uh, once you entered IPS? I think after entering IPS, as a woman, if you ask me, uh, if you say a few years back or uh, uh, some time ago, I would have said yes, but I think we have progressed in this regard. Uh, gender, related to gender, I wouldn't say we are completely equal now, but at least we have come a long way long. forward and we are doing good. Uh, women officers, as you see in the field, uh, they are doing very well. In fact, right. we have some exemplary women officers in Indian Police Service. Uh, as we know, Kiran Bedi, she had been the first woman police officer. Yes. And now, when I was in my academy, I would be very happy to say that there were around 25% of women officers in our academy. Okay. So that is a very applauding number. Okay. And uh, regarding quality also, their work stands out in the field. Right. So uh, there is nothing that is holding us back uh, in this service. And there's few challenges, yes, we do face. Uh, but then I think work is what will put you forward. Correct. Uh, this, some, some kind of discrimination or whatever we face, we can put it back. We can put our work forward. Absolutely. I think that is the way we, we can yes. actually move forward because yes. I think over the years it has been a patriarchal yes. setup and in that we are just trying to prove ourselves yes. and that can be only through our work because I think that, that only yes. uh, says the answer out exactly. to the uh, people. Right. So uh, now after getting into this service, uh, but I would like to go back to asking you as to when you were preparing for your civils, you know, right. uh, what was your routine and what was it that kept you so determined and kept you so, you know, the, the perseverance because it requires a lot of patience, a lot of hard work. It actually tests your patience. Yes. So what uh, is it that, uh, you know, gave you that motivation every day that, yes, I need to do it? Yes. Uh, so this would also be a message to all the aspirants. Uh, this question is very important that, uh, what kept you going yes. while you prepare for this exam? Yes. So first and very important thing I would say is the purpose. Uh, right. Why you want to join this service. You right. should be very clear about this. Right. Uh, so when I joined, uh, I had a purpose in my mind. Uh, I, my parents, especially my father, he always said that you do something in the way that you can support society, you can give them back. So somehow I knew I had to join civil services. I had to do something. So I had my purpose very clear. So despite failures, I knew that I would keep going, I would keep studying until I reach my goal. So this clarity of purpose is very important. Not only in civil services, I would say any career you choose, right. if you want to achieve your goal, your purpose must be clear. Absolutely. And uh, secondly, I would say distractions. Uh, so when they say civil services, yes, you have to study. You have to study all day long. Yes, you have to study 24-7 or a week or entire month or entire year. So there would be many distractions coming your way. Uh, so keeping these distractions away and then continuing on your journey is very important. That right. is one more challenge that you face. Right. Uh, and I would say uh, thirdly, because the syllabus is very large, uh, sometimes you get the routine gets very monotonous. Yes. So you should have your hobbies also. Right. Apart from your studies, if you have something to get back to, something that rejuvenates you back, yes. that is very important. So I had meditation, I used to meditate. So okay. uh, the advantages of this were one, I, it would help me in concentration okay. as well as I could rejuvenate myself back right. and get back to studies afresh. Right, right, got it. So apart from meditation, was there anything that you loved or yeah. was there something uh, that, you know, had a huge gap and you couldn't do it and then you got back to it? Was there anything like that? Yeah, I actually love painting a lot. Okay. Uh, I love cooking also. Okay. Uh, so painting was something that I'd left after my graduation. It was long time that I'd taken uh, interest in that. So when I started civil services, yes, I needed something as a backup. Uh, when I was tired of my studies or when the routine got monotonous. So I took back to painting then. And okay. It was really good. Lovely. Yes. Right. 
and uh, after you got back into uh, you know your study routine and then uh, you got posted so is was there any incident or any incident that you would like to share which is close to your heart or uh, where where you felt ki yes i became an ips officer and this you know proved my purpose is there any incident like that that you would like to share uh so after joining the services yes yes uh so after joining the services uh i would share two things yes. that uh, actually uh, made me proud of myself i would say yes one was uh, after getting into indian police service we have two year long uh, training into academy okay this academy is in hyderabad sardar okay. vallabhbhai patel national police academy okay so i would say i was a girl that okay. was not Uh, too much into extra curricular activities okay. not too much into sports or fitness so it was hardly that i ran 1 km before that oh okay so uh, then in this academy you had to run 10 km 16 km and okay. there is a very strenuous physical training that you have to undergo okay so this was additional challenge of i cleared the exam okay uh, so i was hesitant i didn't know i could actually do this but i would say that training is phenomenal over there okay. and you have best trainers okay so i was very proud when i actually passed out of the academy wow. uh, clearing all the exams and all the training that they had there so uh, this was one thing uh, second i would say after that we come to our state cadres i had been allotted andhra pradesh so here uh, we go to a 6 months of district training so i had undergone training in prakashan district okay so there uh, this was the first time that we get into field Okay. we actually face challenges that we read only in books till then right so there uh, i had to undergo a lot of i had to see a lot of cases right criminal cases that we actually train ourselves into so there were murder cases there were abduction cases there were cyber crimes so i would say when i actually went into these cases i investigated them myself that was when i actually felt proud of being into services wow. donning the uniform and being an ips officer right you know you know i can i can see that pride in your face uh, you know when you say you know donning that uniform and uh, when when you are actually proving your work as to as to you know the reason as to why i took this profession yeah. and when the purpose is proved i think you feel so satisfied right yes, so definitely very nice um uh, just uh, going forward i would like to ask you uh, that you know there are uh, thousands of children from our right. uh, country who are preparing for civils and um, i know delhi is one of the hub yes. um so i would like you to share some information on uh, the civil on people who are um preparing for civils and also for people who are aspiring to become civil servants so what could be uh say your view points on them and what can they do okay uh so one thing the aspirants who are preparing uh, especially in delhi and also in other parts of india uh, one thing which i said earlier also first have purpose why you want to get into civil services that will keep you motivated all throughout the journey because it may be a one year journey or more than that you never know so have clarity of purpose uh, second do not follow herd mentality Okay. Uh, so just because so many students, so so many people wants to join services or giving this exam, it is not that you also give this exam. Got it. So because failure can put you back, right? So do not follow herd mentality. First, understand why do you want to join the services, then give this exam. And second, because it can be a year long process or more than that, do not get bogged down. Once you have clarity of purpose, it will keep you motivated. But have a guide, have a mentor. so uh, when i said i had failed for few years uh, there was lack of mentorship i okay. didn't know in which direction to go what mistakes i made so have a mentor someone who had already passed through this journey take guidance right. before you start and then third i would say uh, practice a lot uh, do not get bogged down by so many material that you have in the market so much of uh, books that you have or so many academies or uh, coaching institutes that come up do not get bogged down you don't have to join all of them uh, because we live in the era of data you know we have lot of information out there on the internet so what you can do is rather than joining this coaching institutes uh, what i would personally it's my personal opinion that you can uh, opt for a specific subject that you lack in okay and you can find the sources on the internet as well okay so do not spend a lot of money okay. um, be wise be smart 
and instead of hard work i would say do smart work smart work yeah, yeah. so uh, this is my message for all of them and also have a backup in case uh, we do not clear this exam uh, what you can do is you can go for your backup option sorry go for your for your backup option okay you can have another career as well okay i would say uh, there are many many flourishing career out there we have right now so civil services is not the only option in case we don't clear we should have something that we can fall back on got it got it and apart from this uh, you know the the scope uh, i would also like you to speak on the scope of uh you know once the civil uh, services are cleared yeah. and if people are uh, getting posted or if people are in the verge of getting posted okay. what is the scope of civil services in india uh so scope i would say there are many services firstly it is not only indian administrative service that we popularly know as yeah. uh we have police service we have revenue services we have yeah. foreign services yeah. apart from this also there are many hundreds of other services which okay. we are not aware of okay uh, so once you get posted uh, firstly the biggest advantage is the diversity uh -huh. any service that you opt for you are exposed to a lot of knowledge right a lot of work a lot of diversity that you have not come across till now so one it enhances your personality uh, a lot of diversity that you get and the second because it is pan india the services uh, so you are posted across india and foreign services you are posted abroad also so also this again gives you a lot of exposure right. i would say so that way uh, civil services is actually very good if you actually want to serve the country right uh, this right. is my opinion but i think apart from this also as i said earlier there are many options there are many career i think one should wisely choose based on the talent set that they have first right. understand uh, what are your strengths what are your weaknesses correct accordingly they can choose their career wise right so when you started preparing for civils was it always in mind that you wanted to get into ips or did you want to get into some other service uh, so when we write this exam we are supposed to fill some preferences so i had my preferences as well uh, it was administrative service then the police service and then revenue services so police services was my second option okay and uh, according to my rank i had been allotted this okay but after being inducted into this i would say i'm proud to be a part of this service and i think this is what i would like to do in for all my life now. right um so now that you said that you know ips is the way you want it to be forward yes. uh, is there anyone from the police uh, force or from this service that you really right. admire you adore or your role model is there anybody like that uh well i would say uh i hadn't thought about this any role model but uh, then i would say all the women ips officers in our country i really look forward to them because they have made a mark uh being a force any uniform force in fact uh, we have very less proportionate of women in this forces so entering this force then making your mark and proving your work uh, this is something very inspiring so i think all the women ips officers uh, they are our inspiration our motivation that we also follow them and make a mark in the services right right so this yeah. brings me to one question you know as a woman ips officer uh, you know posted now in andhra pradesh and then maybe yes. in the future you might be posted somewhere else yes. uh, what is it that you do you have anything in mind which you would like to do for the women safety in the country or is there anything else in mind that you would like to contribute towards uh, the women safety uh, in our country yeah so uh, this is something close to my heart uh, even when i joined the services i had few things in my mind that i would focus on and one of them was uh, women safety and security uh, because we still know that our country is marred by a lot of crimes against yes. women and we have a lot to do in this regard uh, so what i had thought is uh, one thing is always prevention is better right so awareness among women is very important right uh, we have started doing this and we do it here also uh, we go to villages we make them aware of their rights of how they can prevent those crimes how can they be more aware uh, so we do this we do okay. this regularly okay. and uh, secondly i would say not only women i think uh, the other a uh, thing that is close to my heart is children i think okay. children are the future of our country and they also need a safe environment to grow yes uh, so their safety is equally important 
Right. So I think one as prevention, we create awareness. We go to mm-hmm. schools, colleges and have a lot of programs. Okay. And uh, secondly, I would say that uh, the major crime coming up is the cyber crime, which okay, we all yes. are equally affected. Uh, so what we do is, again, we create awareness against this. And um, uh, we do a lot of programs. Uh, we put up a lot of videos, informatory videos, uh, where people can know how they can be very cautious of these crimes. Got it. So, yeah, we do all these things. Nice, nice. Glad to know that uh, yes. these are the things in your mind and right. uh, this is how you would like to contribute to the uh, society. Okay. And uh, one more thing, you know, this almost brings me to the end of the conversation. Mm-hmm. And I would like to ask you that, is there anything that you love about the city of destiny? That is Vishaka Okay. Yeah. So, in fact, I love this city. Uh, this is the first city or the most beautiful city I felt in Andhra Pradesh. And I love the beaches here. Uh, so, it's amazing. And uh, somewhere because I come from Hyderabad, I feel it is like Hyderabad. Right. And uh, <laughs> it has a lovely, pleasant weather. And the people are equally lovely. Nice, nice. Glad to know that. Yeah. Um, and the last question that I would like to ask you is, what is your message mm. to be it the budding civil aspirants or right. to the people around there? What would you like to convey to them? Uh, so one thing to the aspirants and to all the students, uh, I would say uh, that dream big, take risks in life and uh, while you dream also uh, be sure that uh, you know that you may succeed or you may fail but never take failure as the last step. Failure is always one step that you move ahead and closer to your success. So uh, failure is not the end, it is just another stepping stone towards your success. Uh, so always dream big and have faith in your dreams. You will somehow achieve it if you have faith in them. Yes. And I would like to end with one quote from Swami Vivekananda, which al- always was close to my heart. Uh, he said that take risks in life and if you succeed, you lead. And if you don't succeed, you may guide. <laughs> right, right, right. Can you repeat that once again? Take risks in life. If you succeed, you lead. If you fail, you may guide. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ankita. Despite your busy schedule, uh, I would really like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being there with us today and for sharing so many uh, good insights and also giving a message out there to the civil aspirants. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of people like you uh, getting inspired by you and um, are definitely in the verge of making this nation a better one. I'm happy. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us.